Hello YouTube. Um, welcome to October and here's hoping that this season of Euronymous finds you and yours well. Um, I have a lot of things that I've been wanting to get to you. I just haven't had a chance yet. Um, this part of the year is always my busiest and you probably won't see me much until January or February. Um, I, between putting together uh, regular OFS gatherings, um, writing deadlines, extra project, and then of course family with all the holidays coming up, um, I don't always have the time I'd like to put together things, but I figured um, I'd at least uh, give you this video so you'd have a little something to tide you over until I had more time to work on some of the more extensive videos. Um, one question in particular that came up was um, someone asked me about a set chart. Um, charts of set are an interesting thing. They're called the chaos chart for a reason. Um, so basically, uh, a set chart is a chaos chart and often means the magician who has a set chart works better unconfined and chaos magic seems to be their strong suit. Um, it may also suggest that the person feels out of sync with the world around them and more comfortable in the astral. Um, or walking between the worlds. Um, people with set charts often have a predisposition uh, to be very psychic depending on whether uh, Mars and Mercury are conjunct and water signs are in the occult houses. Um, the set chart is usually defined by the Mars-Mercury conjunct in the upper right sextile of the chart. Or the Mars and Mercury are there but they aren't conjunct. Um, that seems to uh, differentiate someone who has a stronger set chart as opposed to someone with a weaker set chart. Um, that's all that is. So um, basically, I, I'm not here to teach you astrology because trust me, it takes a lot of years to learn how to read charts in general, let alone um, progress from reading charts in general to reading charts magically speaking. Um, magical markers, uh, that takes a while to learn how to read. I've just recently within the last two years kind of started picking that up. Um, I do offer uh, chart readings for people who want them. I do charge $25 because it takes me about an hour to cast and read each chart. So it does take like a lot of time. So it's my time necessarily or that you're necessarily paying for. Um, now uh, I want to talk about uh, this really odd thing I keep hearing. People keep saying it. Um, I keep hearing people say, well, you know, according to OFS demonotry, or oh, I don't agree with OFS demonotry, or oh, I don't practice like OFS demonotry does, and all that weird stuff, which I think is kind of bizarre because I'm going to be honest with you guys. Um, OFS is a group, it is not a type of demonotry. A lot of people seem to think it's some sort of type of demonotry. Um, I, and I think that's because. Uh, we had an informational website at one point that we uh, handed over to uh, demonotry.org and the Gen Dem group. Um, because uh, really there's like only four regular members of OFS Demonotry um, and then other people as they happen to get together. So I mean we're not even a big group. So for anybody to think we're like a definitive or we consider ourselves the beginning and end all of Demonotry is kind of ridiculous. Um, we, if anything, we as a group practice, as a group, practice a form of Western Semitic and Canaanite demonolatry. And quite frankly, I, I personally tend to lean also more toward the Kemetic side of things too. Um, I've gotten more into the Kemetic demonolatry in recent years. So there are Kemetic demonolators out there. There are Greco-Roman demonolators. Um, there are even Christian Satanist type demonolators. Now, the Western Semitic Canaanite demonolators sometimes have Satan in their pantheon. Sometimes they don't. It depends on, it really depends on the group and what they've agreed to. And the reason uh, OFS has agreed to include Satan in the pantheon is because some of our members were theistic Satanists or leaned more toward that side of the fence when they first, you know, um, entered into the group. And quite frankly, I do consider Satan as part of my all. Um, one aspect of the all. Uh, that seems to confuse a lot of people too. They don't understand the whole point of Satan being the whole, how that translates, how the adversary translates to Satan as the whole. And basically that goes back to the Adam and Eve story where uh, Satan uh, convinced Eve to take a bite out of the apple. Um, the tree was the tree of knowledge 
Satan was depicted as a serpent. Serpents uh, were often ancient depictions of wisdom and fertility. So uh, that it's only natural to jump from Satan as the adversary to knowledge being adversarial, especially in a religious context. Um, I mean, look at Galileo um, or any major scientist and how, how often science and knowledge are at odds with religion and superstition. And you'll see where you'll be able to make the connection where Satan equals knowledge and how Satan has progressed or evolved into the whole or a part of the whole that all from which all knowledge springs. So, um, a, as an archetype. So anyway, um, that's kind of my take on that. And, um, just so everyone knows, uh, it's not necessarily just OFS who put Satan at the head of the pantheon, but for the most part, just because our group does, doesn't necessarily mean that we all individually do. Um, and it also doesn't mean that there is a definitive um, way that all groups practice either. Um, many people have their own version of demonolatry that they practice with their own personal pantheon. And Satan may or may not be a part of that. Um, and not to mention, uh, yeah, okay, so a lot of the traditional generational groups do include Satan, but that's because, once again, they're Western Semitic Canaanite demonolators. But again, there are also traditional generational groups that are comedic. So um, it's just something to consider. And also, you know, I would really appreciate if people would co quit talking about OFS as if it's some sort of type of demonolatry. It's not. We're a group. We're, we're a very small group of people. And, um, and anybody who sits there and says, oh, well, I don't practice like OFS does, da 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 and yet they swear by the complete book of demonolatry, um, <laughs> then you're just a walking oxymoron at that point because technically OFS practices based on the complete book of demonolatry since I'm the author of the complete book of demonolatry um, it would only make sense so um, yeah you can't say that you disagree with OFS and our, our methods um, if you practice it, by the complete book of demonolatry because that's, you know, that's pretty much our, our Bible, so to speak. Um, but that's, it's not the beginning and end all of it either. So, um, I hope that clarifies some things and kind of gets everybody on the same page. And I'm hoping I'll be able to give you guys another update here soon. We'll see. Um, it'll depend on how things go. So have a great week and I'll talk to y'all soon.